Hello everyone, I'm Julia. We're doing a prenatal class today. I've created, it's just a short one you can do at home. Go ahead and grab some pillows if you have them, maybe a blanket or two. If you have any blocks or bolsters, those are great, but definitely not needed. All right, so let's take some time just to connect to baby and to you, and then we'll do a little work uh, on those much needed areas during pregnancy. So finding a comfortable seat position, you might be cross-legged, but you might be on your knees, sitting up on some blocks, or sitting on one of your pillows. Whatever works for you, whatever is feeling comfortable for you today, because it will change day to day. So just taking that time to make sure that you are comfortable. And then just settling in, maybe moving a little forward and back, just to start to connect to your sit bones. Feel them grounding down onto that block, or onto that bolster, onto the floor. You might rest your hands just on your legs. You may rest one hand over your belly, your baby, maybe one hand over your heart. It's up to you, whatever feels most comfortable for you. I encourage you to close your eyes, or at least to look down maybe to one spot on the floor ahead of you if that feels comfortable for you. And from this space, just starting to breathe a little deeper maybe deeper than you have yet today. Not always so easy when the belly starts to get bigger and the baby starts to grow and you need to take in more and more oxygen, but it can be hard. So just cut yourself a little bit of slack. If you're feeling cramped up there, just notice how it feels to breathe right now. Letting go of whatever has been going on so far in your day or week, knowing that you are taking these next moments for yourself and for your baby just to connect here. And whatever's going on, it'll, it'll come back. Those thoughts, those thoughts will come back and you can always return to them later. Take this time for yourself and your baby right now. Maybe drawing your awareness down to your belly Depending on how far along you are, baby may be kicking, baby may be sleeping, or maybe you're not feeling those flutters or those kicks yet. But just noticing, noticing what that area feels like today. Maybe even sending a little hello. Hi, it's mom. Relaxing around your shoulders and relaxing around your face. Now you can stay with your hands resting here or you can bring your hands down to your legs or to the floor. We'll work a little bit with the pelvic floor before we get moving a bit more and work with our breath. So from here, if you like to close your eyes, again, just drawing your awareness down to that lower area of your body between your sit bones and your pubic bone, if it feels comfortable to be there. On your exhale, I want you to think about drawing up through the center line, almost as if you're kind of picking up a ping pong ball or drawing upwards on the center of a spider, spider's web. And as you inhale, just release, let that relax and open. Exhaling to draw upwards and in, knowing that toning these areas and then releasing on your inhale. Toning these areas will help with your delivery and your recovery, regardless of what kind of birth that you do end up having. So just practicing, doing a few more of those pelvic floor lifts, engaging. Doesn't have to be a gripping or a clamping down. It's a very gentle drawing in and upwards. You can imagine drawing baby in towards your spine a little bit more. Starting to engage the low abdominals as well, just for support. They support the low back in particular. Again, on that release, allowing for that opening downwards. Few more breaths like that, trying to keep your jaw and your throat relaxed. There's a direct correlation between how clenched and how tight your jaw and your throat is, and how clenched, how tight uh, the pelvic floor and that those spaces that need to open, especially during the birthing process, are. 
and then letting all of that go, maybe giving a bit of a shake through your arms. If your legs are feeling it a little bit, a little bit of a shake there too. And then we'll come back to, again, whatever seated position works for you, you can be on your knees as well. We'll start to go into some circular movements here, some Sufi grinds. You can go clockwise or the other way. Just starting to drop your belly and your chest forward and then rounding out as much as your body will allow you at this stage in your pregnancy. Moving forward, feeling the pelvic bowl start to tip back, your tailbone tucking under, and then that spilling forward as you move forward. And then reversing the direction when you're ready. Inhaling, maybe exhaling as you round back. Starting to get this movement into the hips, drawing your awareness downwards, just noticing how it feels to move those areas, especially the sit bones, as you round through. And then coming to center, we'll inhale to lift our arm, doesn't matter which one, and then exhale to round your spine even more. Inhale to lift opposite arm, you might look up even a little bit, and then exhale to round. So just finding some fluidity, some movement through the spine, which can become quite stuck during pregnancy, especially towards the end. Starting to move a little bit more with our breath to find some awareness there, as we know that every breath we take, our babies are breathing as well. It goes right into the bloodstream, in through the umbilical cord, and into our babies. We'll do one more each side. Last one. And then again, coming to center. If you'd like to roll out your shoulders a few times, you can feel pretty good. We're going to add a twist just to work on loosening up through the thoracic spine and the rib cage. So again, we can open up as much as we can for breathing, but then that also allows for opening through our hips, which we'll progress to after that. So what our twist will look like is making a fist with our hands. Your thumb can go across towards your pinky fingers for a little bit of a grounding sensation. And what we'll do is we'll inhale to turn one way and then exhale the other. Inhale, exhale. Now you can move as fast or as slow as you like. I recommend starting by looking forward, maybe focusing on something on the ground. Just notice how it feels now to move back and forth as you breathe. And if you'd like to pick up the pace and you'd like to turn your head side to side, you're welcome to do that. But if that makes you feel dizzy, any kind of vertigo or nausea, just stay looking straight ahead. If that doesn't feel good at all, I encourage you just to Place your hands on the floor, on your legs. You can look down and just breathe. We'll do a few more of these, just twisting side to side, opening up, loosening, getting some blood flowing. And then we'll start to slow it down, just a few more of those back and forth. And then slowly release, taking a moment. Ah, just to notice how that feels. All right, let's move on to our hands and our knees. So you can remove the block or pillow or bolster, whatever you were using there. So hands directly underneath your shoulders, spread those fingers nice and wide. If those wrists aren't feeling great, you can always make fists with your hands or you can even come down onto your forearms or use any of your, your pillows or blocks. Knees underneath your hips, toes can be tucked under or feet can be flat, whatever feels best for you. Just going through a few more spinal flexions. We're going to round out our backs, if you can. Inhaling to drop our bellies, you might look up. Exhale to round, really pushing through your hands, feel your tail tuck under. Inhale to look up. Now I encourage you to find a little bit of play or of intuitive play here. From the next breath onwards, I encourage you to start to look side to side, 
maybe to do some big circles with your rib cage. Just notice what feels best in your body right now and what you might need. You might just need a child's pose. You might just need to sit. But if you like a little more movement or you even want to take a downward facing dog or something a little stronger at this point in time, please feel free to do that. So it's all about listening to your body. We really want to encourage tapping into what you need and being okay with asking for what you need and maybe what baby needs to. All right, we'll take a few more breaths here, just finding again, whatever movement feels best for you, whatever you need. Great. So from here, we'll come into a squat. So just taking your time to get up there, stepping one foot and then the other. If you have pillows or um, a couple of blocks, the blankets even, if you're one of those people with your heels off the ground, you might find it's nice to put a blanket or something under your heels. You might also find that you like to sit on um, a pillow or some stacked up blocks here too. Now squats are really, really important during pregnancy just to help with that opening of the hips. It especially helps to release through the back a little bit too. You might have your hands on the ground. You may even do this close to a chair where you can rest your hands or something on um, the chair. This type of position, many places around the world, women give birth here. So it's definitely great for opening up the pelvic floor. And if you can find the time daily to do this one throughout your pregnancy, you'll definitely hopefully see the benefits of that as well. So just encouraging that opening, drawing that energy downwards, maybe bringing your awareness downwards and thinking about just releasing, relaxing between those bony structures and then breathing. Now you can stay as long as you like here. The longer the better, maybe even working up towards five, 10, 15 minutes. You can do it while you're watching TV. Um, spending time with your children, if you have them, spending time with a loved one, reading, anything that works for you. And you can move in and out of it as well, just working up to those longer holds. So we'll do a little bit of strengthening for the quads from that squat position. Where we'll be coming up to is the standing position. So you might help yourself up just with your hands on your knees, kind of rolling up and through, or you may just go for the straight roll up all the way. We'll do a flow here just to work on a bit of that strengthening. So what it'll look like is we're gonna inhale, arms come up, exhale, hands through heart center, and we're going to come down into our squat. Now you can come all the way down or you can come halfway here. If you're all the way down or here, inhale to pull your chest forward, and then exhale to round. We're going to inhale to hold and then exhale to bring yourself all the way back up to standing. So I'll demonstrate that again. Inhale here, exhale, maybe only come halfway or all the way down. You might only come halfway here if you, your baby is breech and you know that you are working to flip that baby. You may not want to come into a deep squat and hold it for too long because that will encourage the baby to drop downwards. So let's inhale. I'll demo the full version now. Exhale all the way down. So if you don't want to be coming all the way down into your squat yet, if that, if that is a condition for you, I recommend that you stay in the higher variation. And then roll all the way up. So we'll do that a few more times. Big inhale, just noticing what works for you today. Exhaling down into your squat. Inhale to lift your chest, pull forward. Exhale to round. Inhale to hold. And then exhale to roll yourself up. You can use your hands to help you as much as you need. Inhaling, exhaling down into your squat. Again, I'll show the variation. Inhale, pull your chest forward, shoulder blades on the back. And then exhale, round down. You might even press through your hands. Inhale to hold. And then exhale to round yourself back up. We'll do that one more time. Big inhale and exhale down. Inhale, lift, expand. Exhale, round. Inhale, hold. And then exhale, roll yourself back up. Beautiful. 
give yourself a little shake out. We'll be coming back down to the mat from here and right into a lunge. So just taking your time to get comfortably down and whichever foot you'd like to take back, doesn't matter which one you start with. So coming into a low lunge, this is where your props will be quite beneficial. You might place something like a blanket underneath your knee, your back knee. You could also fold over your mat for some double thickness. And just start to allow your hips to come forward. You may walk your hands off to the side if you have, again, some bolsters or even a chair. Depending on where you are in your pregnancy, you might be staying higher up. Or if you're still fairly early on and you like the slightly deeper stretch, it feels okay through the belly, you might be coming lower down as well. Just keeping in mind that relaxin is flowing through the body at this time, the hormone that really releases through the ligaments in particular. So a lot of your joints are going to become more lax. If you are a practitioner regularly of yoga, you want to think more about coming to about 60% of your edge. So not pushing as far as you would otherwise. There'll be lots of time for that later, but you can suffer some consequences of overstretching those ligaments, um, especially when the muscles start to tighten a little bit during pregnancy because they're holding on and compensating for that relaxation. We need the relaxation, but we just want to be careful in, within our bodies. So again, just breathing here. Trying to relax around the face or around the jaw. Noticing how that feels there. Some options here might be to turn your toes out to the side a little bit. If you're looking for a little more fiery option, you might lift that back knee off the mat as well. But for most of us, we might just stay in a little bit of a deeper, softer stretch here rather than the strengthening version. Encouraging those hip areas to release, to relax. Now you can stay here if you like for a bit of a different stretch more through the glutes also quite important during pregnancy we'll move into a pigeon pose now if you're quite far along you may want to have some of your pillows to place your buttocks or your hip down onto during the stretch for a little bit of a prop upwards if you're earlier on or you're quite flexible through the hips it may feel okay for you to come all the way down Again, it'll depend on where you are in your pregnancy and just how comfortable you are feeling. You may stay centered here, or you might walk yourself forward, or again, rest on a chair or your couch or anything else that can help you to prop up and feel comfortable. Using your hands is great too. Just to protect the knee here, you might want to flex the foot or you can point uh, at the ankle and flex at the toes here. Just a little bit of protection around the knee that's not feeling good through the knee. An alternative for this one is our 90-90 pose or the stag pose, where you can turn your um, feet in that 90 degree angle position there like a windmill. And you might just turn slightly off to the side and stretch there, or even walk forward a little bit from here. So a few different options that you can play around with at different points in your pregnancy as well. As always, try to bring it back to your breath. I know I do a lot of talking sometimes. See if you can connect here. Just noticing sensations. Maybe checking back in with Babe. And again, encouraging your facial, facial muscles to relax. whichever variation you're in we're slowly going to come out so just walking yourself up maybe moving your props off to the side we'll transfer us back into a child's pose from here so wide knee just sinking down again depending on where you are you may be using those pillows or those blocks just to rest your head on as you sink down 
posture earlier on, you may be resting all the way down in your child's pose. Allowing the hips to sink back. Allowing as much as you can to think about that opening through the hips, the opening through the pelvic floor, almost like a rosebud or a flower opening in the spring. You can imagine those petals opening for your baby. And slowly we'll bring ourselves back up moving to the other side so we'll have the opposite leg of what you were just doing coming forward starting in our low lunge just working to open up that pelvic region allowing yourself to sink forward back toes can be tucked or not sometimes the tucked under version can help with the kneecap if you're feeling discomfort there it just shifts it a little bit Again, those options to have maybe a blanket or a pillow under your knee works too. Kind of just paying attention to what you might need and what kind of position you might need to be in. It might look different every day. Breathing. Listening to your body if you need to back off at any time. Do that if you need to just lie down and breathe at any time you can do that as well never forcing anything and especially at this time in your life listening listening if anything doesn't feel right not going there whether it's emotional whether it's physical or spiritual Noticing how it feels across your forehead, behind the eyes. Noticing your jaw and the throat area. Can you release a little more? And then as you're ready, we'll move into our pigeon on this side or 90-90 with the the knees, the stag. So just paying attention to how those knees feel. Allowing yourself to sink. Finding the time to set yourself up so you feel comfortable, especially. Wanting to induce that relaxation response. And if we don't feel comfortable, our bodies don't feel safe, it's hard for us to get there or we won't get there at all. So just take that time for yourself. And then if you like to close your eyes, maybe turning your head just to release your neck, maybe rolling the shoulders or just thinking about dropping them away from your ears. You may start to sink a bit deeper, but not pushing any edges too far. If you find your mind wandering, especially as you start to hold the longer stretches, knowing that this time is still the time that you set aside for yourself. See if you can place those thoughts. Maybe it's the uh, future, maybe it's the past, maybe it's imagined. See if maybe you can place it in a bubble and just let it float out the door, float out the window. If you really need it, it'll come back. And even if you don't, it might come back too. So just see if you can release that for now. Take this time for yourself. Notice your body. Notice your baby. Notice your breath.
slowly preparing to come out. And just roll yourself off to the side. We'll sweep that back leg around in front. Come to do a windshield wiper motion here. Just get a, some of the juices flowing, a little lubrication through the hips. Allowing for the time and the space to move those knees side to side. And then for our final stretching pose before Shavasana today, we'll do a wide-legged forward fold. So if you have a blocker bolster, again, this can be a nice one to take a seat. You'll take your legs out wide. And if there's any kind of discomfort or pain behind your knees, that's where you can use your pillows or your blankets for some support. If this option is not comfortable for you, you could also come into Baddha Konasana or butterfly variation. So whatever works best for you. Noticing today. Sitting tall and first let's ground down into those sit bones. Feel that grounding connecting to the floor, to your seat. And from there, just start to walk forward. Depending on your prior, prior flexibility and depending on how big your belly is at this point, you may not get very far. And that's okay. We're just working to open a little bit through the hamstrings, through the calves, and especially through the pelvic floor and the hips. So drawing your awareness into that region once more, maybe closing your eyes, and then just noticing that movement. It'll lightly rebound with your breath. Inhaling kind of drops downwards, exhaling drops upwards. But right now we're just going to think about the relaxing, the opening part, which is so important, especially during um, delivery, but also during life. We need to be able to relax that area of our body and not just always be gripping and tight. So finding that breath into your back body, into your chest. Noticing the pelvic floor. If you can walk farther, you might want to. You may, again, want to rest against a chair or something else here. You may want to rest your forehead. That can feel really good. If you have a block or a bolster, resting your head on that as well. Just to really release and let your neck go. Give it a break. to your jaw area. Can you relax there? How are your shoulders? Are there any areas in your body where you're holding on to something that you don't need? If it's tension, can you see if you can just allow that space to release with each exhale? If it's your mind wandering, again, see if you can return to the space now. Draw your awareness to your senses, things that you hear around you. What are the sounds? What are the sensations beneath you, the points of contact to the ground? How does the air feel on your skin? How does the air feel entering your lungs? Noticing your breath. Nourishing your baby. We'll stay for one more breath here. And then we'll slowly start to walk ourselves back up. And just taking your time. 
you might want to help those legs in with your hands. Again, any kind of movement, organic movement, whatever feels best for you. You might even take a moment just to open your chest. You might look up, drop your head back. It's almost as if you're sunbathing, taking in those glorious rays. And then we'll move into Shavasana from here. If it doesn't feel comfortable for you to be lying down, you can do a seated meditation or just find your breath there. If it feels okay to lie down sideways, you probably know from going to bed what feels best for you, but some ideas are to have a pillow or block between your knees. Some support for the belly, you may have a blanket underneath your belly. You might also have another blanket um, or a stuffy or a bolster or something to hold on to on the side there. So as before, just taking the time to make sure that you do feel comfortable. You can ask yourself the question, if I could make myself 1% more comfortable, what would I do? What do you need? Take that time for yourself. Indulge yourself in your baby. And then bring yourself back into your breath. Not worrying about forcing it here, just allowing it to come naturally. Each one with its own flow and at its own pace. Maybe taking a moment to do a body scan, starting at the top of your head, moving through and down your throat, your chest, your heart, noticing your belly, noticing your baby. your hips, your legs, and your feet. Just allowing anything that needs to, to soften. And if you have any concerns, any worries that are racing, if you feel worried about baby, or about what may come. A practice that is nice for working with baby and trying to ease some of that, is you can imagine as you inhale that you might be drawing any kind of worry or anxiety, concerns, pain, discomfort away from your baby. It's like this, this gentle smoke that's coming off baby, you're breathing it in. And then as you exhale, you're just releasing it. It's a warm, glowing light. Baby is glowing in that warmth. As you inhale again, drawing in, drawing up, releasing that, those worries, whatever it is from baby. Exhale and they soften. Exhale and you soften. Just working with that practice or whatever works for you. And hopefully you have more time for yourself, so please feel encouraged to stay here for as long as you like, as long as you are able and feels good for you, nourishing for you. I will sign off here. But I wish you all the best, and hopefully I will see you again soon. Stay breathing. Namaste.